in the state of Michigan, the Republicans are uh, immediately trying to pass a right to work law. It already passed the Senate, uh, passed the House today, and it could be signed as early as tomorrow by Governor Snyder. Now, uh, in the past, Governor Snyder had said that he was not interested in this. Of course, he's a liar. So people are very upset about this because you have to understand something. Right to work sounds lovely, like, hey, shouldn't everybody get a right to work? But what it does is it allows for, ironically, because Republicans say they're against freeloaders, it allows for freeloaders. So you already don't have to join the union. That's a matter of law, right? But if the union represents you and they get you higher wages, pensions, etc., then you have to pay dues. Now, that's normal. What right to work does is say, no, even if they represent you, even if they got you all those great things, you don't have to pay dues. Now, what does that do? Of course, that guts the power of the unions. It sets one set of workers against another. It has them fighting, and it diminishes the power of the workers, which is, of course, exactly what the rich and powerful want, what the top multinational corporations want, and what they funded the Republican Party for. So there's a lot of people upset in Michigan. In fact, there was 12,000 protesters there today. And then Stephen Crowder, who is a Fox News contributor and a so-called comedian, uh, was out there apparently trying to provoke people. And he got in the face of a lot of very angry protesters. Understand these guys think that they might be losing wages, pensions, health care, etc. And then this guy comes in to agitate. Now, it's a free country. He's got every right to agitate. And what happened here is unacceptable because they started taking swings at him. Let's take a look. Bernie destroyed one tent. Leave the tent alone. Get the f out of my face. Don't tear down the tent. Get the f out of my face. You hurt a lady in there. You're addressing me. I didn't hurt nobody. You hurt the f out of my face. Back the f up. Stop tearing down the tent. Back the f up. Okay. okay. I can't stand that smug smile on his face because mission accomplished. Fox News goes in there to try to prove that they're union thugs, etc. Gets in their face. Ha ha, you're losing your wages. Ha ha. And then the people get provoked and they attack him. And then he looks at it at the end like, ha ha, got him, right? But he did get you. It was unacceptable. Everybody who assaulted him, the guy yelling about the guns, the lunatic, whoever he was, I don't care if you're union, your workers, whatever you are, all those guys should be arrested. That's assault. And it's so stupid. It's what Fox News wants you to do. Why do you do that? Fox News works for those same corporations that are trying to take away your rights. They work for the same donors who are trying to take away your rights. And you help them by doing that. It was a dumb, dumb thing to do. So why are they so angry in the first place? Well, that's what a lot of people don't cover on the news. Well, that's why we got the Young Turks. So let me tell you why they're so angry. First of all, Governor Snyder in Michigan originally had said exactly a year ago, right to work legislation is too divisive an issue for it to be on my agenda. Oh, way too divisive. In fact, you just saw how divisive it was. But all of a sudden, a year later, it's on his agenda and he's about to sign it. Why? Because he was lying. You know, these people who take him at face value, Detroit Free Press talked about, like, we feel betrayed. He said that he was going to be a moderate. There are no such thing as Republican moderates. It's because they all get paid for the same radical agenda as I'm about to show you. So one of the guys who admitted that agenda is a guy named Ron Wisner. Now, he used to be the head of the Michigan GOP, the head of their GOP. Now, recently, he gave a speech where he explained that he was with a group of conservatives, and back in 2007, they hatched this plot. We've got it on tape of him explaining it. Watch. I had the opportunity to meet in Washington with Governor Kennedy, which was the last state that passed right to work. And I was with Dick DeVos, and I was with Governor Angler, and I was with some people from AFP. And what we determined was that to win that election and be sure we were going to win it, we couldn't have a governor that was against it. And so we decided to wait and wait until we had a governor. Now we have a legislature and we have a governor. There you have it. 
Before, we weren't sure that we could ram this through. But now we got the governor who promised not to do this legislation, but secretly, of course, promised all those donors I'm telling you about that he would do the legislation. Now we can proceed with our efforts to destroy the workers, reduce workers, re destroy the unions, reduce worker power, and pay them as little as possible. And I'll give you numbers on that in a second as well. So who was he talking to or talking about in that segment? He talked about former Michigan Governor John Engler, who's now, of course, the head of the business roundtable. Wow. Surprising that the business roundtable would like to gut workers' rights. He talked about former Oklahoma Governor Frank Keating, of course, another Republican. Billionaire donor Dick DeVos. He's the guy that runs Amway. Uh, he gives his workers, he calls them all independent contractors, doesn't give them pensions, health care, gives them nothing. In fact, he just outsourced 100 blue-collar jobs in Michigan and 100 white-collar jobs from Michigan to Costa Rica. So the guy who doesn't want workers to have any rights shockingly gave a lot of money and was part of the strategy to destroy worker rights in Michigan. Wow, I couldn't have seen that coming. And if you noticed, Weisner said in the middle of that, and some people from AFP. Who is that? That's Americans for Prosperity. And they are, of course, the group funded by the Koch brothers. Of course, of course they are. In fact, the Republican Governors Association gave millions of dollars to Snyder's campaign as he was running last time around. Who gave to the uh, Republican Governors Association? Well, will you look at this? David Koch gave, and so did Paul Singer, another huge hedge fund manager, who, by the way, also has a vested interest. He bought a parts company, held it hostage uh, until uh, the government gave him uh, the money that he was looking for as part of the GM and Chrysler bailout, the guys who pretend to be against bailouts. What frauds! And then he took that parts company and literally got rid of every single union job in the state of Michigan uh, when he bought it. Gee, oh, those guys are against workers' rights and wanted to take those away so they can crush workers more and pay them less? Well, I couldn't have seen that coming. And of course, the Michigan Chamber of Commerce is also on that list. Uh, they represent all the businesses who want to pay their workers as little as possible. They're the ones who fight it, uh, f uh, funded Snyder in the first place. And really, it turns out Snyder was lying when he said he'd be a moderate and that he was against right to work laws. Ah, oh, weird. By the way, Snyder also appointed an emergency manager. And what did that emergency manager do? Well, he adopted four out of the four recommendations from the Mackinac Group. And who are those? That is another conservative think tank, and it is funded by the Charles G. Koch Foundation, huh, who could have guessed, and the Walton Family Foundation. In other words, Walmart. All the money eventually goes back to corporations who get all of the advantages and who want to make sure that you get none of them. All right, what else do they have for you? Well, uh, the state director, at least in Michigan for Americans for Prosperity, admits what they're up to. They say Michigan passage of right to work legislation will be the shot heard around the world for workplace freedom, as they claim it. A victory over forced unionization in a union stronghold like Michigan would be an unprecedented win. In other words, look at that. We came to Michigan where the auto workers are and we screwed you in your capital. You see, we can do it anywhere. We can buy any politician. Your democracy doesn't mean a damn thing. We buy those guys, we hatch the plot, and then we take away your rights, and then we pay you lower wages. That's how it works. But if that wasn't clear enough, they got even clearer. Here is Scott Hagerstrom, the Michigan State Director for Amer Americans for Prosperity. He says, we fight these battles on taxes and regulation, but really, what we would like to see is to take unions out at the knees so they don't have the resources to fight these battles. You see that? And that's the quote right there. That's the most important one. He says, we want to gut you so bad, you can't even fight back. That's the whole point. <laughs> and then, if that wasn't clear enough, uh, the Detroit Free Press, who's now finally woken up to what's happening, says, oh, right, they intimidate the legislators. Huh, interesting. They report, quote, certainly there are a large number of Michigan legislators who are beholden to Americans for Prosperity or the Koch brothers. Word is the groups threatened Senate Majority Leader Randy Richardville's leadership post and promised them a primary challenge in 2014 if he refused to move the right to work forward. Of course, they got these guys in their back pocket. If the Republicans dare disagree with their donors, the donors come out with a stick and they go, wait now, what would you like? 
Would you like all the help you need and all the funding, or would you like a primary challenge that's funded by millions of dollars from us? In which case, you'll be free to go home. That's how this system is rigged. So what are the results of that rigging? Oh, wait till you get a load of this. So now they tell us right to work is great. In fact, here, look at Governor Snyder. He's gonna explain to us, oh, it's wonderful for jobs, here. And as a practical matter, the other thing this can do in Michigan is bring more and better jobs to Michigan. Indiana's had a strong experience. They did similar legislation back in February. Um, they've seen thousands of jobs come to Indiana, and those jobs could also come to Michigan. <laughs> so does it work? Well, let's take a look, because the data is in. There's uh, 24 right-to-work states now with Michigan, uh, as it'll happen very soon. Uh, now let's take a look at the numbers. So four out of five of the top five states that uh, receive the most federal aid are right-to-work states. Now, why do you need all that federal aid if all the jobs are pouring in and your economy is doing great? Turns out, no, your economy is not doing great. You need the federal government to bail your ass out. How about wages? In right-to-work states, they are 3.2% lower. How about employer-sponsored health insurance? It's 2.6% lower. The rate of employer-sponsored pensions is 4.8% lower. So the minute you have a quote-unquote right to work, you lose your wages, you lose your health benefits, you lose your pensions, all of those that go down, not up. The jobs also don't go up. What goes up is federal assistance because all those people can't afford to actually support their families anymore. Now, what happens at the end? Well, let me give you a sense of when they rig the rules, how this thing plays out. Look at corporate profits versus corporate taxes. When I show you that chart, you're gonna see in 1952, the blue line is actually corporate taxes. And they're actually high, paying a higher percentage of taxes than their corporate profits. So now that's the golden age, 1950s to 1960s. That's what the uh, conservatives say, the golden age, right? And then it shifts, and look, you got parity. They make profits, but they also pay the same amount of taxes. Until you get to about 1984, and then what happens? Profits soar, and taxes start to drop. Why? Because in the 1980s, that's when they began to purchase all these politicians, because in 1978, it became legal for corporations to spend money on politics. Citizens United only put that on steroids. But they, it became legal in 1978, and then you see it in every chart. And all of a sudden, corporate profits go up, corporate taxes go down. In fact, here, corporate taxes are supposed to be 35%, and they cry. You see them all over TV, CNBC, Fox, and they say, oh my God, the corporate taxes are too high. You know what the real rate that they're paying, the effective tax rate is? Lowest, 12.1%. It's supposed to be 35, it's down to 12.1%, because they set the laws to their advantages. Now, let's get a sense of perspective here. Corporate income tax, in 1952, it was 33% of federal tax revenue. In 2012, it's 9% of federal tax revenue. Why is that so important? You see what they just did? They shifted the tax burden from themselves onto you. Because somebody's got to pay the taxes. You got to have schools, cops, firemen, the defense, etc. They don't want to pay it. They bought the politicians, so they don't have to pay it. You pay it. That's how you get screwed. And then they take away your rights, and then you get less wages and less pensions, et cetera. And in fact, this is the worst of all. You want to talk about lower wages? Look at this chart of productivity. I show it often on the show because it is so telling. Productivity going through the roof. American workers, you're doing a great job. And right around 1978 to 1984 in that ballpark, what happens? Boom. Average hourly compensation and average hourly wage no longer match productivity. The wage you're getting flatlines. They take everything in the middle. And then, of course, they use a small percentage of that to buy politicians. And then they turn around and go, what, us? Oh, we weren't planning this. And get a load of Governor Snyder at the end now when he says, what? I'm just trying to help unions. You think I'm kidding? Here it is. Yeah, they actually came to my house. Um, and this is one of those issues that it's important to move forward with because it's all about being pro-worker. This <laughs> is about giving the workers the freedom to choose whether their resources go to a union or not. And I actually don't view this as anti-union because it really gives the unions an opportunity to better present their value case. And if people see value, they should join. If they don't, why should their resources go there? You see how disingenuous he is? The guy who'd been planning to do this all along, even though originally he said, no, 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 I'm not gonna do it. Then he says, oh, I'm trying to help the unions by making sure they get less dues, less members, and have less power. So they could, of course, 
they don't have the ability to negotiate for higher wages. And he's totally lying when he says, oh, I'm just giving people a choice. No, you're allowing for freeloaders. If they get the benefits of the union negotiation, of course they should pay the dues. Now, if they don't have anything to do with the union, it's a whole separate issue, as I explained in the beginning. So, finally, here is the conservative dream come true. Because the whole point of this is not only to take away your power, but the ultimate last trick is to get you to fight one another. So he says, oh, I'm just trying to help some of the workers, and some of the workers actually are such suckers they believe him, and then this kind of fighting ensues. Why can't you see my point of view? Because I support everybody, but I'm, I'm not for myself. You did, you look at me, boy. It shouldn't be a condition of employment that you have to join a union and have to pay dues as a condition of employment to feed your family. Perfect, Hunger Games. Get the districts to fight one another, get the poor to fight one another, get the workers to fight one another. Meanwhile, you took all the gain from their productivity, you lowered their wages, their health care, their pensions, and you laughed at them while they fought one another. It's a sick game, but that's exactly how it's played.